Good morning. It is great to have you with us here on Ireland AM. Um, it's hey. start of a new week. It is. We've got loads of great things coming up for you. It's the 16th of January. Here is what is on the way today. We're just saying each other things. Today is Blue Monday, supposedly the most depressing day of Welcome. the year. Come on well, in. Fear not, we're going to be joined by psychologist and eating with the enemy star, Dr. Dr. Mally Coyne, who's going to have plenty of tips to beat the blues. We're, we're fine, aren't we? I woke yeah. up at 6 a.m., so I'm like, I don't know it what day it is. very frosty, very cold out there this morning. Yes, cold water Spread on the windscreen. the windscreen. That's it. Operation Transformation presenter Catherine Thomas will be stopping by for a chat about the brand new season a little bit later on. Plus, we're going to be catching up with one of Ireland's best-loved comedians and impressionists, Mario Rosenstock, is going to put a smile on her face. Yeah, morning. he's just going to talk like Alan Hughes the whole way through when he joins us later on, Alan. Yeah, he's just going to do it as you, as Sammy Sausage. Oh, does he? Oh, yeah, OK. That's what we're going to see. We're going to see you. We're going to see if I he does. I never thought you did me, but you know what he did? He did a skit of my ESB ad from years ago. <laughs> I remember, yes, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> he played the mother and them like that, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. Uh, we've a busy one this morning to beat those blues. Catherine Layden is treating us to an apricot and ginger loaf. And myself and Tommy will be getting a lesson in Laughter yoga. I'm not set for that today. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be tying themselves up in knots. Do you have to put on a tracksuit for the laughter oh, yoga? Yeah. Not Do really. You? Anyway, yeah, but cry. that's coming up later on. And Derek is bracing the cold snap this morning. Where are you, Derek? Yes, Al, we're up here in Kiltiernan this morning. It's a very cold, a very frosty one out there today. But some really nice January sunshine on the menu out there this Monday, this Blue Monday, in fact. But a very, very cold night in store with temperatures plummeting back to about minus five, even minus six in places. But we're up here at the foothill of the Dublin Mountains. As you can see, the fire just go there over my shoulder because we're off to do some forest bathing. So we're going to be immersing ourselves in nature, a little bit of mindfulness, a little bit of meditation. So we're going all zen, really this blue Monday morning. Are you with us, guys? Um, <laughs> my fair play to Derek, because it is freezing out yeah, there this morning. It's very Get cold. Get yourself uh, beside that fire. He's like Bear Grylls with the fire, that's it. Uh, now it's time to go for the Virgin Media News Hub. Here is Ashling Roach. Thanks, Maureen. Good morning. The public expenditure minister says he wasn't aware that a postering firm was paid to mount posters in a personal payment during his 2016 election campaign. Pascal Danu also says he's apologised to the Taoiseach and Thánaiste over the issue following a complaint to the ethics watchdog SIPO. Our political correspondent Gavin Riley has more. Until yesterday, Pascal Donoghue had always said that the election posters mounted for his election campaign in Dublin Central in 2016 were mounted by volunteers. And although this amounted to an effective donation to his campaign, the donation was of such a low value that he wasn't required to disclose it to the public ethics watchdog. But after a complaint to that watchdog SIPO last week, Pascal Donoghue arranged a hasty press conference yesterday in which he confirmed that in fact those posters had been paid for, that the postering service and the use of a van had been paid not by him or by the party, but by another individual, someone who, as it happens, is also the chair of a state task force in the North Inner City, which is in Pascal Donoghue's constituency. Pascal Donoghue now says that he has to go back and amend his election disclosures from 2016 to include donations to the value of €1,057 as a result of what he has now discovered. What it effectively means, however, is that Pascal Donoghue says he wasn't aware that as a sitting cabinet minister in 2016 that a significant donation had been made to his campaign. In the meantime, although he's not resigning as a minister for public expenditure, he is recusing himself of any involvement in legislation or ethics relating to SIPO, which is the public affairs watchdog, which as it happens falls under his jurisdiction as the minister for public expenditure. In the meantime, that complaint will still be heard. Pascal Donoghue says he will consider its findings as and when a decision is made. Gavin Riley reporting there. In Nepal, it's reported that the black box and cockpit voice recorder of the plane that crashed yesterday have been found. Rescuers have resumed their search this morning for four people still missing after the nation's deadliest plane crash in over 30 years. There were 72 people, including an Irish passport holder, on board the flight. 68 people have been confirmed dead. Rescuers spent the hours after Sunday's crash searching through the wreckage. The plane was on a flight from the capital Kathmandu to the newly opened Pakara International Airport and came down in a deep gorge just over one kilometre from the airport. Nepal's Civil Aviation Authority said the aircraft last made contact from near Seti Gorge at 10.50am local time before crashing. 
The country's Civil Aviation Authority says the twin-engine ATR-72 aircraft operated by Nepal's Yeti Airlines was carrying 68 passengers, including 15 foreign nationals, and confirmed a passenger flew on an Irish passport. The resort of Pakara is the gateway to a popular hiking trail in the Himalayas. The crash is Nepal's deadliest in over 30 years. A full investigation into what caused it is now underway. Rob O'Hanrahan, Virgin Media News. A man is due to appear before Blanchardstown District Court this morning, charged in connection with a fatal assault of a man in Finglas in Dublin. A man in his late 30s died following the incident at Collins Place at around 7 o'clock on Friday evening. A second man who was arrested in connection with the investigation has been released without charge. A file is to be prepared for the DPP. The government is being urged to take meaningful action to stop its small landlords leaving the rental market. It comes after a survey from the Society of Chartered Surveyors of Ireland indicated that 40% of residential property sales in the last quarter of 2022 were landlords leaving the rental market. The Irish Property Owners Association is calling for a reduction of tax rates and for an easing of regulations. A status yellow ice warning is in place for the whole country this morning and will remain in place until midday today. But Aaron says it will lead to icy stretches and hazardous driving conditions. Some patches of freezing fog are also expected. Tonight, temperatures are set to drop as low as minus four degrees as an Arctic airflow becomes established across the country. But Aaron says tonight will be the coldest night. We're expecting minimum temperatures of minus 5 to minus 1 degrees and again it'll be coldest towards the north of the country. Uh, so it is likely that we'll see further warnings issued in due course as we head through the next few days. And the number of super rich in Ireland has more than doubled in the past decade, according to Oxfam. A new report shows the number of Irish people with individual wealth of more than 46 million euro doubled over the past 10 years. The study also shows globally the richest 1% grabbed nearly twice as much wealth as the rest of the world put together over the past two years. For car insurance, van insurance or home insurance, call the quote devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Thank you, Joel. And a very good morning to you at home or indeed if you're streaming online watching us uh, on The Player. We're coming to you live here from the foothill of the Dublin Mountains this morning up in Kiltiernan and we've got a morning of mindfulness meditation and a little bit of forest bathing coming your way. So a nice setup to kickstart your week. More on that right across the morning. Now let's pull back the curtains on your blue Monday morning with Owen Kelly on cameras and I have to say uh, it is a cold, a very cold start out there this morning. Some Frost, ice, mist and fog trailing around too. Uh, we are seeing showers across Donegal through the Inishown Peninsula. Also through parts of Kerry, in fact, a heavy band of rain up around uh, the Dingle Peninsula as well. The Ivra and Bear Peninsula is not escaping either. So rain gear at the ready there. But elsewhere, uh, those showers holding off in those light northwesterly winds. Now, right across the day, in fact, not a bad day in store because we're going to see some really nice sunshine pull through as we edge our way into this afternoon. Now, still some showers falling through Cork and Kerry. In fact, some of those will be wintry in nature through the northwest, not escaping either. Again, we could see that touch of sleet and a possibility of snow as well. And a very cold day in store too. So wrap up nice and cosy if you're out and about. Top values of about two to seven. And finally then tonight, more wintry showers through the northwest, northern Conth and then across the southwest. A sharp to severe ground frost, icy stretches on roads as well with a freezing fog developing to take through tonight into tomorrow morning. It's going to be a bit Bitterly cold night in store. The coldest we've seen in a couple of weeks, in fact, with temperatures back to about minus one to minus five, even hitting minus six to minus seven degrees across some sheltered spots. So that's how we're shaping up here in a cold Kiltiernan at the moment. We'll be back again live at 7.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, Ukrainian refugees should have pathway to citizenship. The new Minister of State for Integration has said a pathway to permanency should be open for tens of thousands of Ukrainians, clearing the way for them to ultimately apply for citizenship or long-term residency. The global investment funds that own our nursing homes, that's the front page of the Irish Independent. Just 15 nursing home groups own 40% of all private nursing home beds in the country, an unpublished government report has revealed. 
The examiner leads with Irish citizen in Nepal air crash. An Irish citizen is believed to be amongst the 68 passengers confirmed dead in a plane crash in Nepal's deadliest aviation disaster in three decades. Mary also goes with that story, Irishman killed in horror plane crash. The star's front page, Irishman is killed in jet horror. Cabinet tensions over tax breaks for developers is the top story on the Daily Mail. Tensions are growing in the coalition over co controversial proposed tax breaks for developers being used to fix the housing crisis. The Herald goes with man charged with fatal fingless stabbing. One man is due to appear in court this morning in connection with the death of a 39-year-old Dublin man who was found stabbed in fingless on Friday evening. And the sun leads with banned sneeze of Inishirn. Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson were forced to sit out last night's Critic Choice Awards after joining Jamie Lee Curtis in the COVID-19 sickbay. Are they implying they gave it to each other there by having an old kiss yeah, at the, sure at the close, awards? Aren't they? They? Aren't they Blowing lovely? kisses at each other. That's so the cute. Globes. Uh, it's time for a very quick break now, but come back to us. We'll be going beyond the headlines with journalist Lorcan Nye. See you shortly. Welcome back. We're keeping it very upbeat. We're getting rid of the Blue Monday. But here's the line I'm saying. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Oh, Happy. Goodness. Good morning. Good morning. Now, a new report by Oxfam it has found that the number of super rich in Ireland has more than doubled in the past decade. It's not just in Ireland. It's, oh, it's worldwide, Jeff 1%. Bezos, as well. Uh, yes, while another survey has found that one in three Irish people are struggling to make ends meet. So, on that, Lorcan Nine from, from the Communications Clinic is here with us to discuss that and everything else. Good morning to you, Lorcan. Morning, everybody. Um, Good so morning. It is Blue Monday, and there's talks uh, by Oxfam here to cut, uh, calls for a wealth tax, as one in three Irish people are struggling to get through this cost of living crisis. Yeah, so look, it's, it's a report from Oxfam, and a very, very clear call for a new tax maximum that is real something that we all knew and as you say there it, it's a global trend that inequality has been getting worse and worse and worse and worse we managed to bring it down in the late 70s 80s to a relatively okay mm -hmm. level seven eight percent and since then in every developed country it has just shot right back up to above that that ten percent where the top one percent uh, have the vast vast majority of, of the income and the wealth and we're seeing it here as well number of super rich has doubled in the last decade and Oxfam have communicated mm -hmm. this quite well by just highlighting that the Collinson brothers combined with their 15 billion have m more wealth than the 50% of the lowest income earners in Ireland. So the 50% of yeah. the lowest wealth have the exact same amount as two people from Limerick. And fair play to them, they've wow. done great. There's no judgment on the two brothers, nope. but it is a judgment on the Do policies. Do they pay their tax in America though? Or they're based, they're American based, aren't they? So they do have, so they do have anyway, Stripe is in Ireland, still, so they've got various tax bases still, around uh, the world. It is but shocking, yeah. The fact is, and we'll have people uh, texting in from Tipperary going, they're not from Limerick, they're from Tipperary, and then the Limerick will be like, no, they're from Limerick. Um, so that, that's beside the point. Uh, the thing is, is that it is the divide between the haves and the have-nots. And those that have, and it's been said for an awful long time, you know, they're distracting us all by, you know, these little things that are going on. Oh, look, they're the reason you don't have any money over here and they're over there with all of the money. Davos is happening this week, the World Economic Forum, where you've got all these billionaires hanging out. Can we talk about how much the super rich have in Ireland? So the number of super rich with individual wealth, individual wealth over 46.6 million. Hmm. It's a huge amount of money. It's, well, a, it's a significant amount of money. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it. So there's gone from 655 people with a wealth of over $50 million to 1,435 people in Ireland. Yeah. So nearly 1,500 people have over 50 million. Yeah, look, and it's, a, it's a significant increase, and it's a significant increase among the backdrop of wider income inequality getting worse, wealth mm. inequality, which is obviously different, getting worse, and then intergenerational inequality mm. getting worse as well in that it's because of the, the rise in asset prices, the rise in house prices, it's very much harder for people born from the 80s onwards to get on the property ladder, which means this is only going to get worse and worse and worse. Um, and so it, it, this is not a surprise. It, it should be the biggest story that and climate change consistently because the problem is just getting worse. And there's an unfairness to it that, that just boils people and therefore the, the issue is worse itself. And look, Oxfam are calling for a wealth tax in Ireland 
for wealth over 4.7 million. Now, it's a 4.7 million is a fair whack of money, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it would be graduated from 2% up to 3% up to 5% tax on wealth. And that would raise, they would say, is where's the figure? 8 billion every single year. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not a risk free move. No. Because the argument is obviously if you start putting that tax on, you know, people just go elsewhere. I... But some country at some stage has to do it. Yeah. They just have to say, do you know what? This isn't fair. It might not work. They might all leave. We might end up with less tax, but, but it's not fair. So let's try and then pressure other countries to do the same. Because if every country did it, well, then well, you, taxes would you, just but be. But you in. look at Ireland, the surplus that we had, the six billion euro surplus this year, and I think income tax was 28 billion, up 16%. Mm. So, and, and Pascal Donahue has said that this is volatile, that there are a huge amount of tech companies, pharma companies with mm-hmm. high earners in this country that are pumping in money and paying for so much. And because you have six billion. In, in surplus, like they could spend that on the cost of living, they could s- spend that on the third who are struggling, mm. but they're not. But they've also said that they've it's decided not a tax they're holding it back. Have. Yeah, they're yeah. holding it back for a rainy day. So whether they were to do the wealth tax, it's just going to be add more money into the surplus. And very, and very the very, chance people then could leave the country. Incredibly logical, and the logical part of my brain agrees with you totally, Tommy. When we look at yeah. the economics okay. of 100, mm. but the emotional part of me says, do you know what? It's not fair. Tax them and let's see what happens. It's pure capitalism, and you used to have <laughs> capitalists like Cab where they built Bourneville, an entire town where they're workers. We had Guinness houses built in Dublin for workers in Guinness. Fa- so they had a place Good to live. Good luck trying to buy one of them now. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at their, they're like 590 grand and they were houses that were built for workers uh, well, in the Guinness factory. Bad. Anyway, um, yeah, and there's new research and it just says that the crisis is set to hit widows, the divorce and the people who are separated very, very, very hard in the next coming months. So 896 to get in contact with us. Um, electricity, we've got loads of wind. We've Certainly at the wind. weekend. Huh? My yeah. goodness, I yeah. thought they powered the whole country for a month with yeah. the amount of wind at the weekend. And we'll, we'll, we'll take it as a positive. with this. Yeah, that just over a third of Irish electricity was generated by wind last year. That's 34% of power uh, coming from wind farms. And again, clever analysis bringing through of how much would we have had to pay for that if we were paying it for, you know, in, in, in gas. Mm. Um, and it would have been two billion. So Irish consumers haven't had to pay uh, two billion because of this wind energy. So all very, very positive. Uh, let's take it as the wind that it is. But then you compare it to the targets. Uh, by 2030, the government have decided that we need to have 80% of our energy coming from renewable sources. Wind is the most significant driver of renewable for us. It's 2023. It's on 34%. Uh, we're going to have to double the amount of onshore and offshore wind farms built and connected by 2030 to have a hope of hitting um, that mark. So uh, that target is aspirational. Why moment, not, though, Lorcan? Why not? We are. Uh, we have... Like, we could be the Middle East when it comes to renewable energy for wind farms. Like, if you think about the wind coming in off the Atlantic, if you had wind farms the whole way up it, we could be churning it in. We wouldn't have to worry with, about wealth taxes or anything else with the money there, flying there in. There are plans muted uh, by the government that to, to put time limits on planning applications for wind farms so that decisions have to be made in, in, in a certain number of time to make sure we can actually build them. Why not at the moment? Because people don't want wind farms. Of course they don't. Uh, don't People aspirationally want wind farms. They don't want wind farms near them. They don't want wind farms in their area. And therefore, it's being delayed. So that's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, if this was brought in and we started pushing the planning and saying, you know what, I know you might not like it, but we need to start building them. It's possible. But ask the person who's wind farms been built next to their house. Off the coast, off the coast, yeah. wind farms. I don't he's going to sort it. He's going into it. That's what you're going to get into. Wind farmer. It's fascinating. The science behind it is absolutely fascinating. It is. And a it could that already power a meet. third of the country. I, could, I was actually surprised by that. Mm. Well, the amount of wind that we generate here in the studio in the morning time, we should be doing. They should be generating up here, I'd say. Now we're going to move on to something else. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's talk science and biscuits. This is fodder for breakfast TV. I love it, Lorcan. It's a- a- absolutely, absolutely. The kind of study that says, you know, we get huge coverage from this now. Yes. It'll be absolutely amazing. I have an issue with this study, OK? <laughs> Scientists are real the best uh, biscuit to dunk in tea, and they say that it's, it's a hobnob. But when you look at it, it's the British Medical Journal have done this now. <laughs> when you look at what they've looked at, structural integrity of the biscuit was, was one of the major things that they looked at, which okay. doesn't break apart into the tea. Yeah. But, that's not what you want from your biscuit. I mean, I could put a segment of apple into tea and it wouldn't fall apart, but you don't want to dunk it into your tea. Oh, so structural yes. integrity is nonsense. Structural integrity, nutritional content and crunchiness. 
no, no sense of taste. Where's of the whiskey. flavor? The a chocolate hobnob. on top. Yeah, it's a hobnob. Hobnob is an oaty, horrible biscuit. Yeah, but They're... a chocolate hobnob. Have you ever tried the Fox's extra chocolatey cookies? There you go. I mean, you dunk that in, They're half so your good. tea is gone by the it's time you pull out of it. But, but my the whole God, point of dunking the biscuit is that it melts apart. So yes. that when you go, so you don't want structure integrity. You don't no, want that. No, you want it. You want it. What it does, it makes it gooey. The hobnob becomes gooey yeah. because of the structural integrity. Yeah, 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 it's you know. so good. We all know. No digestives, that thing is going in the bottom anyway, of your tea. The British Medical Journal and calling them out there. The, 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 <laughs> well, what they chose to, to value was uh, unacceptable. Look what we've done. We've done a poll. <laughs> Which biscuits are private? Okay, well, let us know. Uh, give us, get the phone out, scan it over the uh, the little QR code there. Hobnob digestive or rich tea, or if you've something better, 0896 111 We're just going where, yeah, we both Have you like a favourite? Well, I actually don't really drink tea time. But... <laughs> 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 we bought that outrage yeah, this morning, yeah, didn't we? Like, I, I, mean, I love it. Well done. It doesn't yeah. mean yeah. biscuits either. <laughs> Forget uh, capitalism destroying the world. It's biscuits we're Lorcan. going for this morning. I love I it. I'm from the communication clinic. Great to have you with us. Thank, Thank you for that, Lorcan. <laughs> Thank you so much. Structure integrity of biscuits. We'll be back with you I'm very shortly on Ireland AM. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, from goalies getting a kicking to six red cards in the GAA yesterday. It was a very busy weekend. It was a busy in weekend the world for the refs, that's for sure. Yeah. Talk us through it all. Is 42.8's Gavin Cooney and former Dublin footballer. Uh, Paddy Andrews, good morning to you morning. both, lads. Uh, well, let's talk about the football and Arsenal continue. Eight points clear at the top of the table after Man City losing to Man United. Mm. I think they're now officially favourites to win the Premier League title for the first wow. time. Wow. Um, that's not just my opinion. You know? <laughs> yes. That's the opinion, know. opinion of many other book George writers. George Graham will come out they, uh, they were brilliant. You know, they were much better than Tottenham in the first half, went 2-0 up, and then Tottenham did as Tottenham do. They were terrible in the first half and slightly better in the second. Load. <laughs> They have, they have I don't know. Done it. I, like, I thought, I, like, I, up to the last couple of weeks, I would have agreed with you because that's what Arsenal have done traditionally mm. over the last 15 years or so, and it's a young and unproven team. But this is their bet. They've never had so many points after yeah. this many games of a Premier League season, and I have to say, they do look the real deal. You don't want to decide in January, though. You know, you do kind of want it to go down to the wire, and mm. hopefully, it will do that. But I think it's the scenes that have happened yesterday. So this is the goalie was going to get his water af after yeah. the final whistle. And a supporter came on and... But afterwards, said, uh, obviously the Spurs fans were giving him a slightly hard time, um, but he gave, he gave it a bit, bit of a back at the, end of, at the end, of the, end of the match, like pumping his fist and kiss, kissing the crest. And obviously that, that angered uh, one fan a little, bit, a little bit too far. Uh, and we saw it as well, I, I just saw footage quickly about an Everton, the Everton fans. Did you see them stopping players as well, going home and confronting the players? Mm. But, but even the board were warned not to go to the game for their own safety, the Everton board. And the, they didn't go to the match. So it's obviously a very, very toxic atmosphere around a lot of these clubs at the minute. And you're right, it's incredible this day and age that the fans can get that yeah. close to players. We've seen the, the, the Twitter video of Everton players being stopped outside the ground. It's, it's incredible to think that that can still happen this yeah. day and age, but and it's, it's just it's not It's been right happening for a couple of years in England. Like, you yeah. can go back to, like, Jack Grealish when he was playing for Aston Villa. The fan a fan ran, ran on to and pitch. hit him. Yeah. So, you know, English football haven't got their arms around that The problem. mentality but of it's, it. It's not, even, it's not even just in England, though. When you're seeing even in the gap and the football yesterday, amazing to see David Clifford have the perfect year. Yeah. But was it six red cards in that yeah. match? Like, it's this sort of, like... Uh, I don't know, people take their anger. There seems to be so much yeah. anger out there at yeah. the moment. Um, or maybe it's just Well, now, own. this is, of course, this is the club <laughs> you final. You said that, tell me. And it's Fossa from Kerry, who yeah. were taken on Stuart oh, yeah. and Harps from Tyrone. And, you know, traditionally, Kerry and Tyrone, they go at it. They do, they do. It, it was actually, it was a brilliant game. It was a typical junior football match. Yep. And I, I would say, it's just the legend of David Clifford that, like, if he's not playing in that game, there's not really much attention on a junior football match. Mm -hmm. But yesterday, it's... Big crowd in Crow Park. Everyone's watching on telly. Everyone's talking about it on social media. Mm. What a season this guy has had. Mm. We're saying to, to Gavin before, and he's only lost one game, the Sigerson wow. Cup final. And he's won everything else over the last 12 months. So yesterday was kind of the cherry on top to lead his, his club to win the All-Ireland. But it did, the last five minutes of that game, after it was a really, really entertaining game, 
it did descend into a bit of a farce now. Because he got 11 of Foss's 19 points, yeah. right? It, yeah. it ends up 19 to uh, to 113. But six players end up going off, yeah. including both Clifford brothers. Yeah, I'm right. amazed he was set off. I didn't think that was allowed to happen. <laughs> but uh, but it was, the, the Tyrone team probably lost their head a bit. And uh, four from the Tyrone team were sent Four off. from Stewart Town. And even after the game, there was... Um, probably wasn't the most gracious uh, aftermath of a match as well. And I think they'll be disappointed with that. We're saying that a small club from Tyrone, it's probably their biggest ever day yeah. up there and it's on national television and there was just some unsavoury incidents at the end of that yeah. game, um, which kind of spoiled it because it was a brilliant game. And for Clifford and his brother Paddy, what, what yeah. a, a year. That, that and also for Kerry, just off. really quickly, because Aidan O'Mahony, uh, who, know. you know, what a stalwart for Kerry. 42 Crazy, yeah. years old, he won the intermediates. With Rathmore. Look at, like, he's eight years older. I've been like, retired about three years. Like, I'm like, I have to dust the boots off now. <laughs> uh, is O'Mahony. he putting you all to shame? Because you're all like, we all played with Aiden. 42. Uh, what? And what a career he's had. He's yeah. had he's such a all career. Islands, all stars. And to still dancing be doing with the it. stars. And dancing oh, with the yeah, stars. Of course. <laughs> yeah. See, that's the perfect lead up to it. We don't have much time. So, Leinster, of course, Leinster Munster, of course, won in your panic to Ulster. Let's not talk about their performance. Is he okay? In the women's <laughs> rugby. Oh, he's um, really moving on. He's not letting you talk about it. Ulster <laughs> lost to Connacht on that as well. But Munster <laughs> beat Leinster in the Interpros too. And it was Six actually so, a lovely good news. Was it uh, Clodagh... Uh, where is O'Halloran. it? O'Halloran. Clodagh O'Halloran. So and she rang... Uh, so she got... So she rang Neve Briggs, the Munster coach, last Monday and said, come here to me. Is there any chance I can propose to Chloe, her missus, <laughs> if we win the match? So there was a huge amount of pressure <laughs> the on had Clodagh. To they had to <laughs> win the match in order to win this. And... Mm. Claude ended up getting the third try. Yeah, look no, at this. It was that's absolutely brilliant. Well. brilliant. And just slightly disappointed that the referee didn't wander over and say, crouch, touch, pause. <laughs> 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 well played, well played. Oh, yeah, very good. Back, 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 back so after good. Good. That you had that You're point. back yeah. after the World Cup. You're like, I'm, yeah, it took a lot out yeah, of me, but it's yeah, good yeah. to go. Yeah. Gavin it's, Cooney. <laughs> Spectacular. I <laughs> love that. Engaged. Are you disgusted? Oh, I love that. That's really good. That's amazing. Is that not the headline everywhere? I don't know. I have, it should haven't be. seen it. It I should be. It. If it's not, it should be. It should be. Huge congratulations to Claude O'Halloran and uh, Chloe Pierce, who got engaged after the beat at Leinster, which is lovely. And Nia Briggs held the ring the whole way during the match as well <laughs> on the side. Like, yeah, she had it. It was amazing. That's a good story. So good. Gavin Cooney from the42.ie and Paddy Andrews dusting off the boots. I yeah. have to know. I have to know. <laughs> it is like, are you, like, I'm back. Are you it's like, an announcement. Yeah. Are, you sending, he, it, are you sending it down the line, <laughs> Aiden? I'm coming for you. What's is he like playing golf, so Paddy? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Priorities. Uh, cheers, lads. <laughs> Great to have you with us. Now it is uh, break time, but Alan, what's coming up after? Uh, well, I tell you, all that sport yesterday, so much happening. No idea any of it was happening. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> and he and Kerry for the weekend. And me and Kerry for the weekend. The taxi driver was telling me about them. We're, we're getting beaten here. Now, go. Dr. Mally Coyne will have some tips for staying positive this Blue Monday, but she'll be giving us a lowdown on the new series of Eating with the Enemy. We'll see you after this. Thanks for staying with us. Now, what happens when two strangers with completely opposing views sit down together for a conversation over dinner? We all kill each other. That's yeah, what it is. Right. The three of us, it's like, can't be dealing. Uh, Eating with the Enemy is back and here to talk to us about the brand new season is Dr. Mally Coyne. Before that, let's take a sneak peek of tonight's episode. When someone meets you, what question do they always ask you? Well, without being falsely modest, um, you can't have been in front of a television camera for 20 years or on a radio station for 20 years that you meet somebody and invariably the first question is about that part of my career. I mean, what questions do people ask you when they meet you first? One of the first things they ask is, are you really a traveller? Are you really a traveller? I, 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 I am, but it is a question because I think there's this notion that travellers have to fit a certain stereotype and generalisation. Welcome, yeah. Dr. Mally. How are you? That's Great. obviously uh, Martin Bean's ward, and he's sitting down with George Hook, and that is from tonight's episode. And I suppose when, you're, when it's called eating with the enemy, you know, you're expecting sparks to fly, but that's mm -hmm. not necessarily what we see all the time in it. No, not necessarily. I mean, definitely we paired the there's so there's three cup pairings tonight. 
um, in season two, starting at half ten tonight. And really, we, we paired people with opposing points of view to sit and, in, and you know, have a meal together to discuss those opposing points of view. But as you can see from season one, and you'll see again from season two, um, they certainly do dis discuss their opposing points of view, but sometimes by the end of it, you find that they find more commonality than one would expect. Certainly more commonality than you would find on social media when people are just yeah. clicking away and being outraged by people's opinions. The echo chamber. Vic, I, I loved yeah. last year. I thought, I think it's just a great premise, the whole thing, is so simple. Um, but you and um, Richard Hogan, you set the questions. Because, so when you're setting the questions, is it always in your mind, like, this is a television show, so we need to get a reaction? In a way, but I, I think that the television show aspect is, is always going to be there, but I think we really wanted to encourage... It, it is a social experiment. Yeah. We did really want to encourage this conversation menu, like we designed it so that they would act, it would actually bridge gaps, it would get them out of their comfort zone. It wasn't just questions about what their opposing points of view are. There were a lot of like emotional questions that were thrown in in terms of, you know, have you experienced grief before? Instant opinions about things, icebreaker questions like the one you just saw. Um, so like we were there, myself and Richard, during the filming and we were helping production in terms of which question would be asked next. Gear changer questions, if you feel like the conversation needs to go in a different <coughs> direction. Because at the end of the day, this was all about providing a safe space mm. for people to come and have what could be a difficult conversation. Yeah. And for the viewers then to maybe start to ask themselves, mm. why do I have the set opinions that I have? So we're trying to open minds. And yes, it's a TV show, but duty of care, as I told you, Mwerin, when we did our, yeah. um, our Hooked uh, you know, we podcast, did a podcast last year. And actually, I listened to that last night and... You know, of course, we discussed season one, but there's a lot of parts of that that are really relevant if anybody wants to listen. I just think it's quite interesting because, uh, you know, we saw columnist Ian O'Doherty there who's known for kind of having outrageous views and you're, you're waiting for this explosion. But sometimes, you know, with TV, it's not exactly what you, what you want to see. I actually, I, I found it really heartwarming the first season. Mm. Uh, none of us in work and in life, we all have people in our lives who have different and opposing viewpoints. Mm. And have we kind of sometimes forgotten that? Because with social media, we just have people backing us up and then you'll fight the people who are against us. Like, it has created this polarised society online that isn't necessarily there in real life. I think so, and yeah. I think online has made that much worse. But, I mean, since the beginning of time, we always surround ourselves with people we feel most comfortable with. Mm. That's to feel safe. You know, that's an evolutionary thing. So it's when it's online, you know, you have algorithms that are feeding you information and people that are going to be similar to you. So rarely, you know, like tonight's episode, you see George Hook, he'll say, I've never sat with, with, uh, with somebody from the traveling community, community yeah. or somebody who's gay, at, at, you know, to have dinner. So, like, that is really <clears throat> interesting in itself. So it's like we do stick within our comfort zones, but that kind of stops us progressing and kind of, um, you know, kind of growing as human mm. beings. So that's why this is really important. Um, as, a, as a clinical psychologist, and people will be looking in this morning and we're talking about Blue Monday, is there a science today that today is the most depressing day of the year or is it just a load of nonsense? It is kind of a load of nonsense, Yay! to be honest. I'll be honest with you, it's a formula that was made up by psychologists for a marketing company in 2005. So it is, but what I do want to say is, you know, it January can be, you know, January can be a difficult month yeah. for yeah. people. The whole, the whole premise was that, you know, it's so many days after Christmas, it's a Monday, it's dark, and also people are struggling financially yeah. as well. Absolutely. So, and, and I don't want this to deter from people who have, you know, mental health issues who really require support. Yeah. And, and mental health can be, it can be harder when we have less light outside. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, yep. that is proven, seasonal affective disorder. So, I think if we can kind of draw, you know, like awareness. Uh, I know the Samaritans in the UK talk about Brew Monday, where it's like, let's have a cup of tea together on this Monday. Let's but, have a chat type yeah, of thing. Yeah, but mental health is an everyday thing. It's about like maintaining our Completely. mental health on an everyday basis. And from that kind of cheapening kind of marketing point of view, yeah. I do think for me, the fact that we've got Bridget's Day coming up, 
is kind of helping. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's kind of like, oh, it's holiday. Like, holiday. Yeah. Yeah. like, it's something, and I know uh, people are really tight and no yeah. one has any money because I got paid to, but it does seem very nice that it's doing that. Are we doing, are we doing a poll about that? I don't, I don't know. Are, are we? we? About Blue Monday? No, we're no. not. No, I'm completely <laughs> and utterly wrong. I apologise. We're not buying into it. It's a marketing <laughs> ploy. Um, so Eating With The Enemy, uh, brand new. It's back tonight at half past 10 on Virgin Media 2. 10.35. It's just after the new series of Love Island. You can catch up on the Virgin Media player, Dr. Mally Coyne. Thank you so much for joining. Really you. looking forward to watching it tonight. Yeah, I, love I that really series. am yeah. indeed. I love, the, I love the last series. Now, lots more still to come this morning, including Operation Transformations, Catherine Thomas and comedian Mario Rosenstock. Thank you very welcome back. We've lots on the way to help put a smile on your face this Blue Monday. Which Dr. Manny Coyne just told us was all a heap of nincompoop. Yeah, a lot of people are, feel January in those general. Are, those are exact words, I think. In just a few minutes, we're going to be catching up with TV presenter Catherine Thomas. Plus, funny man Mario Rosenstock is going to be stopping by. No Irish celebrity is safe from his brilliant impressions. We are looking forward to that. Yes, we are. Later on, we're brightening up your morning with a spot of laughter yoga. Just exactly what it says in the tin. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Oh, that's as good as what, we're going to yeah. get, I think. What is that? Uh, Alan, you'll always put a smile on that. Yeah, face, but that's what we're it. going to be doing, that's... Tommy. You laugh, you're forcing the laughter out. But we're there laughing. we go. Catherine Layden's always in good form and laughing, Catherine. We're always laughing, yeah. Would you like, would you do laughter yoga? I don't know what it is. It's laughter yoga. It's yoga but with laughter. But if it's really laughing, though, not just it put it on. It gets you to laugh. No, that's you put okay. it on at the start, but then you actually but then end up laughing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Anyway, apart from that... <laughs> Sorry, the little chat there. <laughs> what are we making well, this morning? A lovely <laughs> apricot and gingerbread. But it's a bread, not a cake. Not gingerbread cake. It's a bread. Very simple to make because I'm using very simple ingredients. <laughs> so give us that cooking. again. It's, a gin it's not a bread, it's a cake. No, or it's is a it... bread, not a cake. It's a bread, not so a cake. So apricot and gingerbread, but not but a cake. But not a cake. <laughs> Gingerbread oh. is sweet. <laughs> now, Derek is in Kilternan this morning and they're going to be doing some forest bathing. Derek, what is forest bathing? Yeah, well, Al, do you know what? I'm trying to I'm trying to light my sage here this morning to try and cleanse my spirit. Anyway, we're here in the middle of uh, the forest. Forest bathing, Al. We're going to be uh, immersing ourselves in nature. There could be a little bit of tree hugging involved, a little bit of mindfulness, a little bit of meditation. And guys, can I just say, it is a bitterly cold start out there this morning. We'll have more on that in and around quarter to nine. We'll see if we can get this going now. <laughs> Hello, uh, it's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We're going to start with the Irish Times. It's headline, Ukrainian refugees should have pathway to citizenship. The new Minister of State for Integration has said a pathway to permanency should be open for tens of thousands of Ukrainians, clearing the way for them to ultimately apply for citizenship or long-term residency. The global investment funds that own our nursing homes, that's the front page of the Irish Independent. Just 15 nursing home groups own 40% of all the private nursing home beds in the country. That's an unpublished government report has revealed. The examiner leads with Irish citizen in a Nepal air crash. An Irish citizen is believed to be amongst the 68 passengers confirmed dead in a plane crash in Nepal's deadliest aviation disaster in three decades. Mirror also goes with Irishman killed in horror plane crash. The star leads with the same Irishman is killed in jet horror. Cabinet tension over tax breaks for developers is the top story on the Daily Mail. Tensions are growing in the coalition over controversial proposed tax breaks for developers being used to fix the housing crisis. The Herald goes with man charged with fatal fingless stabbing. One man is due in to appear in court this morning in connection with the death of a 39-year-old Dublin man who was found stabbed in fingless on Friday evening. And the Sun leads with ban sneeze of Inishir and Colin Farrell mm. and Brendan Gleeson were forced to sit out last night's Critic Choice Awards after joining Jamie Lee Curtis on the COVID-19 sickbed. But they didn't win but anything. But did they win? They didn't win anything anyway. Because uh, he was up for Best Actor against... Did um, your man Butler win for Elvis? No. 
Oh, that doesn't do bode well for the Oscars then if he didn't win. It's fine, he won at the Golden Globes. He'll win at the BAFTAs and it's oh, yeah, fine. He'll win That's all that matters. Answers, it's yeah. fine. So you get better. You get Let's better, lads. Let's move on. We were talking about a wealth tax, potentially. So Oxfam yes. were wanting to bring in a wealth tax. So basically what we're seeing around the world and in Ireland is that the wealthy are getting wealthier and the poor are getting poorer. Mm -hmm. And Oxfam said that we need to bring in a wealth tax to try and bring that closer together again. Sarah said, I agree, we definitely need wealth tax. Why should the poor who are barely getting by pay more tax than the rich? Uh, who have lots of money. I mean, I don't know whether they're... They're paying. not paying more tax than the rich, but it's just trying to make yeah. it more equitable. And Michael agrees with that sentiment as well. And we were also talking about today is, well, a lot of people are saying this is the most depressing day of the year. Yeah. And we were saying earlier on, and we were asking a, a clinical psychologist earlier on, is it? And she was saying it's a load of nonsense. Well, really? Mark, it's, Mark, a it's a marketing ploy, yeah. basically. But, no but January is hard. January yeah. is but she was so saying January month. is hard for a lot of people. So to make people feel happier... Oh, Claire. yeah. Oh, Claire. Today is definitely not the most depressing day of the year for me. I got engaged this weekend in beautiful Kerry. I was in Kerry over the weekend. It's lovely. I'm currently watching you guys while having breakfast in bed before I spend the day at the spa with my future husband. I can't stop looking at my sparkler. <laughs> Happy Monday, guys. Love the show. Well, Claire, congratulations, congratulations. to you. You didn't give us the hubby-to-be's name, but... Um, Congratulations, Congratulations to you both. Yeah. And stay Delighted. in the engagement bubble yeah. for as long as you can. Look it is how happy fabulous. Look how happy Warren has been since she got engaged. Glowing, glowing, glowing. Yeah. She hasn't had a row with us in a year. We were chatting about... <laughs> They, these two fight all the time. It's going on. Anyway, do you know what? We were chatting about biscuits. Tommy, oh, yeah. take it away. What, what do you dunk in your tea, Tommy? So, yeah, so I love a Cadbury's, uh, no, not a, a Fox's cookie. Oh, yeah. So those ones that yeah. all, and they, they get all gooey in the middle. So, we were basically asking our hobnobs digestive rich teas, which are the best? Because in a new study, according to the Medical Journal, the British hobnob, Medical Journal, by the way, this is the serious Medical stuff. Journal have done yeah, this. Yeah, hobnobs say, they said the hobnobs number one. But we didn't hear this one. Connor says, you can't beat a fig roll to dunk into your best tea. Uh, it never crumbles and keeps the taste. I wouldn't be mad about it. No, I don't even like a fig roll, so I I'm mean, not going to be putting that in How do you get fig tea. in the fig roll? Move on. <laughs> a ginger nut biscuit is unde undeniably the best dunker. You need a sledgehammer <laughs> to break that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. Well, you know what? Take part in our poll. You just open up your camera and you can just uh, click on the QR code to let us know. It's our oh eight nine six triple one. I do like a rich a tea dipped in. Even yeah, though they yeah. do fall in a lot. I end up with the spoon. Yeah, most trying of the time to just, spoon that out. Yeah, it turns into soup. <laughs> it's hard hitting stuff in Ireland AM this morning. Hard. We're trying, we're trying, trying to yeah, a bit of lightness. I this, agree. I this agree. Blue Monday. You're trying to drag us down. It's time for a quick break. Thank Catherine you. Thomas is going to be joining us for a chat after this. Does she believe in Blue Monday? No, Catherine wouldn't. She's always happy. See you in a few minutes. Great to have you back. Our next guest is a staple on Irish television who's presented some of the nation's biggest shows. She joins us now for a chat about what's in store for her in 2023. Oh, find out all the is her out. phone going to go off as she's live oh! on air? It's Catherine Thomas. Oh! <laughs> you know, I left it out in the dressing room. Oh, you oh, did? I did. I did. The last time you were here. Mode. <laughs> but the last time you were here, yes. it went off. Yeah. What, what fight? What was it? But it was an alarm. And you were like, what is that alarm for? What was it for? I got such slagging for that. Because I left the phone here behind the cushion. And um, anyway, the alarm started going off. And your floor manager, before we went on air, said, make sure now it's off. Make sure Stephen's it's looking Steven at you. He's got PDIs on you right yeah, there. Yeah. It's but, the problem uh, with do not disturb. You kind of think it's okay. But, but hold then... on. What was the alarm for? You'd completely forgotten. That? You'd completely forgotten. Like, to remind is... me that it was my wedding anniversary. Her wedding anniversary. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> and you spent, because I remember you texted me later on going, I still don't know why, it's, why it went yeah. off. And then it clicked with you like hours later. Yeah. It was literally only that evening I went, shh, it's my wedding anniversary. <laughs> Is that because you went to him for because he had flowers for you yes, or something? Exactly. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you get anything? No, I didn't. Oh, no. you didn't. But no, we okay. went out for dinner that following weekend. <laughs> OK. But he's well used to me at this stage. Ah, yeah, he is imagine. well what used to me at this stage. What's yeah, going on? What's going on? Exactly. It's fine. It's well, fine. you have a lot going on. <laughs> how, how, how do you cope? Because we're, we're on Blue Monday, January, stuff, different time of the year. Yes. 
You are somebody who seems to have kind of got the whole work-life balance oh, sorted. God, I don't How know. Do? I think I think that maybe comes across. I was looking at Derek there up wherever he is doing yeah. as far as bathing. I was like, I could oh. do with a bit of that <laughs> when it happens. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's this time of the year is busy, obviously, because Operation Transformation is back mm -hmm. and we're in pre-production before Christmas. Um, and obviously, Grace is quite young. She's one. Um, and Ellie is four. So look at it's busy. It's hectic, but yeah. I think um, that is the way, like, you know, once January kicks, once kind of October kicks in for me, the last couple of years, it's just been, you know, like it's full on. Yeah. And then you come up for air in February and then, you know, it all kind of, you, we, I have a quiet March and then you're back into whatever you're doing in the summer, whether it's radio or TV or whatever. So because it's just I kind of work in, in like yeah. hectic, so chaotic chunks. Yeah. It's yeah. like I like to you know, describe it. And you get through them and then you have a little break and then you, you know, because we're filming at the weekends as well. So it's... Because I did, I'm, yeah. I was with Karen Coster last week and I was just saying to her, I was like, I don't know how you did this show with, I said it's Keira Darty. I was like, I don't know how. With kids, You yeah. did it with kids. Like, you know, because it's really kind of encroaching when you don't know what your schedule is and it can be 14 yes. or 15 hour days and you've yeah. got small ones. And is it just kind of making it work? Because the girls were like, you know, your your path to motherhood was kind of like this. And, yeah. you know, it's something that you love them so much that it's just like, I'll make it work. You make it work, but you could only make it work with having good people around you. So honestly, I do not know where I would be without my childminder. Um, my husband is great as well. My sister has moved back from the States. So she just had a little baby uh, on Christmas week. So that was her first. So she is, so she's home now. So not that she knows it yet, but like that's what sisters are for. There'd be lots of babysitting. Is she on maternity leave? She's on maternity leave. Do you know yeah. what? Two no, others is fine. Listen, throw them in. It's you fine. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's about, um, putting good people around you really is 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 the only way you kind of get you through it. it yeah. and, and like on a Sunday, we'd sit down and go like, because I'm really bad, as we've just highlighted there, at remembering things, at time management. So I went on to um, Amazon the other day and I bought one of those huge big wall uh, calendars <sighs> with wipeable markers, 12 different colours. And we you want, I was the this. most excited person. So now I've got my all my work schedule. I've got the holidays. I've got the kids. I've got the bank holidays. I've got wedding anniversaries in. Listed well on done, all. you. That's the sort of stuff I could only dream oh, of. I, I couldn't Tommy, live without my calendar. Yeah, the, the two of us were looking at it. We spent, we spent an hour and a half ridiculous, just admiring. And yeah. then, like, he had to fill it in because he's better handwriting. I was just about Are to you say, you have a colour coded. Colour coded. Is this the first month? This of is it? it's the first day. Ah, right. This, first is, day. this is <laughs> a New luck. Year's resolution until right February comes. <laughs> like, will you stick with it? Uh, but do you know what? It's even just actually visually mapping out your year. You know, like yeah. I don't map out the day, no. let alone like the week is as much as I can get through. A wall so calendar actually, changed my life. We always know what we're doing really? now. Yeah, Do you I love have it. one as well? I did it last year for the first time in years and it's like different world. <laughs> I know I'm still really? crap. I know I'm still crap, but I'm better than I used to be. So you did be. it in 2022, but not into this year You yet. haven't bought a 2023 one I yet? I do, yeah. It's a Star Wars one. is up on our wall. <laughs> oh my. Uh, you talk Almost about 40, the girls, everybody. like they're one in four, but you talk about uniquely themselves. What mm. did you mean by that? Just but they're they're two very different characters. You can see Tommy. that already. Yeah. Oh my god! Like they are just uh, they're so different. You know, um, like Grace would be very much her own um, person. You know, and as is Ellie as well. But um, for example, we went away with a group of women. Right. We I took them on one of my retreats with me to Portugal, and the first year. I took Ellie and there was like 30 women and sure she had 30 babysitters. She was up on everyone's knee and kisses and hugs and down and up. And with Grace then this time round, she was just like, absolutely not. I am sticking <laughs> on my mother like a limpet for the full week. No hugs for anybody. You know, you know, keep your distance, people. So she's very much like that. <laughs> So it's so, um, yeah, it's interesting. I you know, love that, but the second one, you're normally able to throw them throw away them. and you're like, yeah. nope, no, just stick with me. I'm not putting up She's with She's very that. much um, mommy's girl. But this is the thing, I suppose, we all look every year when it comes back talking, speaking of personalities, it's mm. Operation Transformation and it's back and there's team leaders. And I was just reading a piece in the paper with John, the Kilkenny truck driver. Yes. Who, who's done it before and he was talking about how it made him realise his, he was in a mental health crisis, a silent mm -hmm. crisis for 45 years. Yeah. And it's his story is amazing. And he Operation, was such a brilliant leader. He was fabulous. Yeah, yeah. And um, Operation Transformation, it's come in for criticism mm -hmm. over the last few years about, you know, 
uh, you know, what it's doing to people's bodies and displaying people like that. And then you read people who are involved in it and they're like, it's changed my life. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be hard to square that circle sometimes when you're like, no, we're doing something good here. Yeah, like, and I think what we just say every year is we just have to keep doing what we do and the show kind of talks for itself, you know, without getting into sort of any big social media arguments or anything like that. And I think a lot of the criticism that comes at the show comes from a time when the show was very weight centric. So, okay. you know, seven, eight years ago, that was like it, the, the show that I started 12 years ago now wow. um, is Amazing. a very different show that's on air now. And I think a lot of the criticism comes from um, people who maybe have not seen the show in recent years. So like we have lots of different indicators of health. Yes, weight is one of them. And it is really important for people to understand that the leaders who come to us in a lot of cases are there to avoid weight related illnesses like type 2 diabetes, like stroke, like cardiovascular disease. So, um, you know, maintaining a healthy weight is a very important part of that. You know, as is BMI, as is having your cholesterol checked, as is getting your sleep, as is cholesterol. So mm. we do have like 14 different health indicators um, every week that we check uh, and we and we monitor. So for some people, they come to the show because they want to run a 5K. Some people don't know how to cook. Some people want to lose weight because, you know, we've got Thomas this year who had a heart attack um, four year, or five, oh, yeah. five, five years ago now. And um, he... Uh, found that he was kind of regressing and he wanted to get back to to a kind of a healthy Research, place yeah. um, and he's cardiac he's cardiac disease in his family you know so for lots of different reasons people come to the show um and you know we've got four hundred thousand people watching and we did a survey last year that 37 um or sorry 73 percent of people who watch the show make one if not two healthy changes yeah. in their household from watching the show. So. It, it is fantastic, but stress is another big indicator of this okay. as well. And and when you talk about the numbers of people are watching that, and I think about like the Sunday game, people like trolls nowadays, social media, there's mm -hmm. a huge amount. How do you get to deal with that? Because even from your point of view, I'm sure you've had to deal with trolls as yeah. well. Do yeah. you try and lead on that side of things? I don't, I don't, I don't engage. I okay. really don't. And I just kind of let it go. And, you know, it would be my friends who'll go, did you see? what was said I'm like sorry I'm too busy watching the you know housewives of Beverly Hills or <laughs> on Instagram looking at you know babies and puppies and you know I mean for me it's like you can go looking for it uh, or yeah. you you know you you can yeah uh, once I can stand over the work that I do and as a mother of two girls and the team that I work with um and the amount and the ethos of the show mm. and also we are I think what people forget as well is that we work with a, a multidisciplinary panel of experts mm. so these guys are like general practitioners psychological um, yeah. um consultants um uh corey registered but they dietitians. Must have to deal with this as well yeah they do they do you know, but, but i think it's you know i think once once the show has gone out like it has every year you know we just all we do is continue to to prove what we do yeah. works yeah can anyone text in and let us know if um, there's any milestones in Catherine's life that she's forgotten about today? I'm not too sure. I can get them on the wall planner. If we could get them, we'll just make sure, make sure that it's their Operation Transformation. It airs Wednesdays at 9.30 on RTE1 and the RTE player as well. Great to see you along you here. Too. And you have the boot camp as well, pure results too. You're a busy woman, I tell you. When I said work-life balance, I'm actually totally wrong. Well, yeah, yeah, well flat we're, out. we're actually heading to um, County Clare to do a hiking retreat. Um, in March. So if you feel like coming down, lads, Love and doing it. a little bit of an out and about. There you go. That does say. Sure he's in. He's, got, he's got loads of time. Get him signed up. My uh, calendar, my wall chart's full. <laughs> it's full. full. It's just too busy awesome. for hiking well, retreats. So. As always, great to have great you with to us. Great to see Thank you guys. Thank you so Love much. Love to see you. Thanks for staying with us. Now, the only thing that can make a good cup of tea even better is a bit of cake, or is it bread? Bread. <laughs> bread this time. <laughs> Catherine Layden is going to tell us. Bread this time, exactly. And <laughs> yeah. now, Alan's going what to is have it, a Catherine stroke now when he hears this. There's no butter in it, Alan, but there's a bit of sugar, but I can give you an alternative for the sugar, OK? He's getting very healthy, no Alan, butter. isn't he? No butter at all. No. And no. I was saying to you that, now, you can that put it's butter really on it. moist. It's very moist, delicious. First have thing you had do some already? No, but I was feeling it. <laughs> what do you like? You put 300 mils, half pint of orange juice into a jug or into a small bowl and you add to that 700 grams, that's, no, sorry, 200 grams, that's 
um, seven ounces of chopped dried apricots, okay? okay? So you just take, you can buy them diced, but... So they don't have to be fresh? No, no, not fresh, no. Oh, you, uh, do they the have to be frozen? Ones. No, no dried. you don't get their... They're dried. The dried apricots, you get them in a packet. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And now here, now here. <laughs> He's lost it today. <laughs> and here I'm we sorry. have two or three pieces But you pieces can buy of... fresh ones, can't you? You can buy fresh buy apricots, fresh. Yeah, they're like, yeah. They're like nectarines. But could, would you not chop them up? No. No, they'd be too, there'd be too much in this recipe. OK. All, they're going to mush on you. All right, So now, enough. four four pieces of crystallised ginger, you can actually grate, you know, about an inch of ginger as well, or ginger oh, sorry, in syrup. I'm going to rub a slice here while you're okay. working away. So you put the ginger and the apricots into the orange juice and you leave it for about <laughs> half an hour, OK? Now he's put Where's butter on it, you see? I'm... Make you some So here we have okay, the stuff that was soaking happy. for a little less than an hour. To that, I'm going to add two eggs beaten and I'm going to add a teaspoonful of oil. Okay. So no fat, just oil. Teaspoonful. Um, and why do you let them settle for like an hour? Why, why do you let it kind it's of soak? So, it's so that they'll swell up mm. and they'll get the flavour as well okay. of the orange um, in through it. And you now, wouldn't do that with the egg and the oil in it. You want to do before no, it's that. better beforehand. Okay. Yeah. Now here I have the um, flour. flour, two seventy-five grams, <laughs> so twelve ounces of our self-raising flour. And Catherine, it's gorgeous. Isn't it lovely? Oh, oh yeah. it's really good. To that it's we're going so to moist. add yeah. one twenty-five grams, four like ounces cake. of sugar. Now, <laughs> if you wish, like cake. you can use these um, stevia or xylitol. Which are sugar replacements okay. that you can get. I've never seen them okay, before. Yeah, yeah you, you can get, get them. them. A lot of people on diets now are using yeah. them yeah. instead of sugar. But I'm using the real McCoy here today. Yeah. And you you've got the real McCoy in yours as well. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now, gorgeous. just mix the sugar through the flour and then we simply stir in the liquid ingredients. And could you That's put it. butter in it? You've got oil, but you... You could. You, you could. could put an ounce or two of butter in it. OK. The reason for the butter, the oil really is to keep it fresh. OK. You don't really need it for the taste. OK. OK, now, so we just stir these ingredients together and you transfer the mixture. It's quite a sloppy, wet mixture, as you'll see in a minute. You just transfer that to the two-pound loaf tin, which I have lined with my liner. If you don't have a liner, you can use the greaseproof paper or baking parchment. Preheat your oven to 325 Fahrenheit, gas mark 4. Or that's um, mm. 225 centigrade. Okay. I'm getting me... me uh, see, yeah, it is quite a tough mixture, metric. isn't it? Well, now, um, it's, that's absorbed. That's slightly longer than the half an hour. OK. If it was left, see, it has absorbed the liquid. So all we do now is transfer that to the tin. OK. So yep. Now, just to mention as well, seeing as there isn't milk in this, if you've got people on... Um, a dairy-free diet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can replace the eggs with three mm. mashed bananas. Mashed bananas are a nice substitute for eggs. People can't take them. All right. In this. So it goes into the oven for, for 40 minutes, you say, is it? No, it could take nearly an hour. What? OK. It takes hour because it isn't a very... It isn't a very high temperature. I'll and take the other one out for you. There's a lot of mixture in the... Alan's been telling you all morning it's, it's burning this one, so... You told me that, yeah. No. Got your hands. <laughs> He's keeping, he has his, keeping his eye on it There you me. go, keeping look the eye on it there. Now, look at that. Look at that. There you go. Now, you leave that in the tin <clears throat> for about 10 minutes and then you turn it out onto a wire tray to go cold. Now, what you do here next is you just simply spread the mixture in the tin and into the preheated oven. Yeah. So and gorgeous, Catherine. Would you, would you keep, Thank you. Keep your eye on it, Catherine. Do keep your eye on yeah. it because it can get quite brown. OK. As you see there, give me that. <laughs> What's wrong with you? It's in crusty. That's in crusty. <laughs> What's wrong with you? That's where no. It's meant to be. Uh... Yeah. Thanks, Tommy. There you go. Look at that. Nice. You know it's baked. Oh, we'll have. Hollow so sound. when you do that and it's a hollow, it's done, isn't done, it? Yeah. And if it wasn't, would you put stick, stick it, it back, back in? in? The oven, yeah. And just put a bit of greaseproof paper on top of it. Right. Not tin foil because the tin foil will cause it to burn. Now, I oh, think no. I'm going to have a slice of the hot one. Yeah, I think we're going Are to go you? for a nice yeah, warm one. For a nice warm one. Catherine, no. gorgeous as there ever. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. My but pleasure. it's a loaf, not a cake. Correct.
Correct. Bread, not a cake. <laughs> now, thanks, Catherine, very much. Now, it's time for a quick break after this. Derek is doing a spot of forest bathing. We'll see you after this. Thank you, Catherine. Looks lovely. Now, can we get all our Zen vases ready, please? Mm. Yeah. Are we all zen? Zen. Nice and zen. Mm. Are we ready? Mm. It's, food. it's food time. We're yeah. totally zen. <laughs> no, welcome back. Now, it's time to cross over to Derek and Kiltern, and we're doing all this. You put on your because he's be Yes, he's becoming... He's, he's going to be exploring the art of forest bathing. Tell us about... We're hearing the... Mm. Mm. Go oh. for it, Derek. <laughs> mm. Good morning, guys. You know, this is right up my neck of the woods. A, a lovely morning we're having it up here in Kiltiernan in South County Dublin, just at the foothills, really, of the Dublin Mountains. And Luke and Nicolene join us now in the Healing Forest. Tell us about it, Luke. Yeah, so the Healing Forest here in Kiltiernan is um, it's a place to come to restore yourself. Um, you know, so it's a it's a forest that's dedicated to therapeutic use only. So there's no mountain bikers and no dogs. So when you're in the forest, it's just you in the forest. So this is a private forest. And then there's lots of different kind of things that we offer within this, including forest bathing walks. Now, we have 33 acres here. We've got the most beautiful views out across Dublin Bay. It's a very special place, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible, yeah. So I grew up here, I was born here, and I've lived all my life here, yeah. So I know the forest the best out of everyone and I kind of put that to use by guiding three uh, people through the forest then yeah. Now let's talk about forest bathing what's involved? So there's a series of kind of invitations along the way it's about two two and a half hours of a slow walk um, and along the way then I would give you invitations to kind of connect with nature so it's it's not a, it's not a bath which is what some people might think but it's uh, bathing your senses in the forest atmosphere. So for people who think tree hugging is a bit out there, <laughs> it's a little bit far-fetched, what would you say to them? Well, you don't have to hug a tree, yeah. do you know? So it's like this space is just created for you to connect in whatever way that you feel comfortable doing that. You know, but it's not a hike, it's not a fast walk, there isn't a destination, you know, there isn't like a step count being, like we would be trying to get away from all that. You know, you're trying to disconnect from this efficiency and the logical mind of like trying to achieve something. So you're in the forest and reconnecting with yourself. Now what you have here as well, you've lots of meditation stations on the way, you've hammocks in the forest here as well. Yeah, there's loads of different places, you know, they're all, um, they're meant to be allowing yourself to be in awe and wonder. And when you're in that state of mind, then, you know, anxiety and depression and like the lower kind of vibration uh, emotions are less frequent and they're, you know, so that's the state that we're looking for. Now, you have mixed groups here uh, for lots of people who want to come down. But what I also love as well is that you have men only groups as well. Yeah, yeah. And for me personally, that's the most rewarding work that we do here for me. Uh, and I know Nicolene is Reiki and I, and I do the men's work as well. So there's lots of different things. The men's days, uh, the immersion days, and then the men's circles on Thursday nights. Yeah, it's very special. To and get. it allows men to connect with their own emotions as well. Yeah, yeah. And we bring it through. We did like axe throwing, but then there's the part before and the part after where we're doing check-ins and we're going deeper, kind of finding out how the, how the person's life is going, really, you know. Now, Nicolene, you're originally from Ghana. Yeah, so I'm a long way away, yeah. right? <laughs> a long way from home, but you've been here a long time. I, I have. I, I came here when I was uh, seven, and, um, yeah, I've loved it ever since, really. Now, you're obviously a husband and wife team. You are a Reiki teacher as well, and what's involved in your practice here in the Healing Forest? Uh, uh, so basically here um, I offer um, Reiki, um, yes I'm a Reiki master and a, and a Reiki teacher so I, I do uh, teach Reiki and attune people into Reiki all, you know, all the different levels but um, I also do the forest bathing uh, walks and when I do the forest bathing walks I do one-to-ones or I do them in groups. Uh, sometimes it's women only in the group, sometimes it's mixed. Um, and it, it really is about an opportunity to support people to really connect with themselves whilst, you know, uh, using nature as a tool to support and the suppose, individual. And I we're on the go all the time. It's very difficult for people to unplug and just relax, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, you know, the, the a lot of the people that, you know, we that 
are attracted to, you know, what we offer here, it's stress. Um, you know, it's it's stress. Uh, every day they're they're stressed, so they're a bit disconnected from themselves. Okay. And when they come here, we, we we offer a safe space for them to reconnect back with All themselves. Right, which is absolutely beautiful. I'm loving this kind of world. This is great. Now you're <laughs> going to leave the viewers at home with a beautiful uh, piece. We're going to call it a mindful minute. Yes. So we have a little reading that you'd like to read to the viewers at home. Brilliant. Thank you. Within you is a great light, a light that will never go out, a light that has the opportunity to shine whenever you face darkness. Darkness is not the absence of light, but an invitation to express it, an invitation to show up, an invitation to remember an invitation to awaken. Call that light from within. Invite it to stand at the forefront of your mind and heart. Let the light lead you. Let the light guide you. Let the light remind you who you truly are, a cosmic being embodied, a star in its next incarnation, ancient wisdom in human form, the presence of love expressing itself, a light that was born to shine. Let the light shine. Let the world experience your brilliance. Oh, oh my goodness. I feel so zen here this morning. <laughs> uh, the Healing Forest Dottie is where you can find them online. Guys, can I stay? Can I live with you? Can I yeah. live in? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with you and the three kids. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for that beautiful uh, meditation. I hope the viewers at home pull something out of it as well. We're having a gorgeous morning here up the top of the Wicklow or the double left houses. <laughs> it's lovely. Uh, back to you guys in studio. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. It, it was beautiful. very peaceful <laughs> inside here. Nicolene's voice is beautiful you can yeah. listen to that the whole time and when your co-host gets really into something you can give him a wet willy in the middle of it so it's totally fine as you're here thanks for that <laughs> you weren't paying attention Sorry. i was actually entranced i was, was, so was, yeah, was trying to enjoy it and she stuck <laughs> her finger in my ear <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Children I have to deal with every morning. It's tough. Still to come, comedian Mario Rosenstock will be here. We've got some stylish looks to liven up your daytime wardrobe. And we're getting to grips with laughter yoga. Who knows? See you after the break. Comedian and master of impressions, Mario Rosenstock talks Glen Rowe and his upcoming tour. Love when he talks about Glen so Rowe. We learn about the healing powers of a giggle as we do a lesson in laughter yoga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 well uh, done. Uh, thanks for that. Well done, Stephen. Stephen. Uh, Alan, what else is on the catwalk? <laughs> well, we're going casual with some daytime looks. And Lorna, what have you got for us? We've got like easy to style, practical things today. We're in that in-between period, but also there's a bit of a cold spell mm -hmm. at the moment as yeah. well. So we want to be nice and warm. But these are outfits for the whole year round with some really good basics that will last you a really long time. OK, looking forward to that. That's coming up a little later on, Warren. Now we're talking all things Bickies. Uh, Bickies. What's your favourite dunker? What was the, what was the, it was something, was it the Medical Journal? The British Medical, Medical Journal. Journal did a study on what was the best dunking biscuit and the result was a hobnob because of its structural integrity because of the oats. There you go. So we asked you at home, Science. what do you think Science. is your favourite for dunking a hobnob, a rich tea or a digestive? And the winner is, for our, for our viewers this morning, the digestive got the most votes followed by a rich tea and then a hobnob. Right, OK. So we like the digestives in Ireland. I think that would have been different if it had been a chocolate hobnob. Yeah, I like this. There's no flavour. We're not giving too much of it, but yeah, digestive is probably... Well, digestive like, is great to dunk in a tea. We do love a digestive. Put a bit of butter on a rich tea or a digestive. I would, I would, I would have in the past, but not now. Not um, now. Not You're now. watching your way. That I'm... I'm Svelte. <laughs> looking svelte. <laughs> You're in the shape svelte. of your life, you are. We were talking earlier, we had a text in about uh, fig roll being the number one. We have a fig roll, but Wayne sounds shocked. None of you heard, but the, it's the number one. It's an Irish bit. We know what a fig roll is. It is, but that's, he, Wayne thinks it's the number, number one, one dipper. dipper. 
There you go. We missed out on that. Thank you anyway for getting in touch with us. We're being told to move on. We did talk because... about other things this morning as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> we did. Anyway, coming up next, the brilliant Mario Rosenstock is going to be here and he's going to have us laughing, laughing our leg off. See you in a short <laughs> <laughs> Your leg off. <laughs> You're very welcome back. Now, our next guest is a face recognisable, well, for having the country in stitches. Absolutely. It's the one and only Mario Rosenstock. Good morning to you. Pleasure to be on, Mirren and Tommy. Thank you and lovely to meet you as a <laughs> yeah, broadcaster for the first time. And by the way, Ian Dempsey says he still got the jacket that you sent him in three years ago from the exclusive Tommy <laughs> Bow collection. And he wears it all the time because it's real man stuff. It's real <laughs> casual. It's, I said, what is it? Like, tell me so I can tell him on the, on the well, TV. And he went, not... It's kind of like a bomber jacket kind of thing. It, it is a bomber jacket. And it's the sort of thing that is meant to fall apart after maybe a year no, he and says, a half so that he'd go and buy another one. No. And still, it's, uh, wearing it's the surprisingly same one. durable, Tommy, much to your chagrin. Now, I haven't received anything from your collection, <laughs> but uh, I am looking for something to wear as Miriam for my new tour. And that lovely well, you red. Can, you can outfit. go with it. Can you? <laughs> All I have is I, I got wine. Do you know, I'll send you some wine. Some I would wine love cabinet. something from that's your I, I tell you what, her to part with wine, that's saying something. Yeah. I really do like Mario. Now, can I just say, sustainable Tommy Bow, <clears throat> we've just gotten that in already. Let's talk about you, though. Right. Can we go... Do we have to? We yeah, can talk yeah. about you. I can. No, before you do, before you start launching into that, whatever, okay. can we go back to the Glen Row days. All right. Like when you started in Glen Row. Oh, I love this. As the doctor, yes. the suave doctor, the everyone's hair. like, who's this? But look at you there. Look at that look. hair. It's fantastic. Aww. What's this story about a creepy hand, Mario? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's actually good. I've hardly ever told this story and uh, it, it's, it still makes me cringe and laugh to this day. Imagine the scene. You're, it's your first day on Ireland's celebrated Glen Row. Yeah. 1.2 million people watch it every week. I did five auditions to get the role of this uh, scrumptious, hot, crumpety new doctor. Oh, yeah. Uh, believe it or not, I was hot, crumpet. <laughs> and um, my grandmother and my family were just over the moon. My grandmother particularly. You know, she pictured me as a kind of a matinee idol movie star in the making. <laughs> and she went, I love it, his hair is so floppy. And she's actually where I got my Michael D. Hickens impersonation <laughs> from. She talked exactly like him. <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I'd had these floppy hair and she'd go, you're lovely, you remind me of, oh, John Gielgud in his prime when he was <gasps> in his 20s. And said, I got the part of the doctor in Glen Row. And she just couldn't believe it and neither could my parents. And then I, it was my first day on Glen Row. And I was very nervous, as you would be. I mean, when you, you started yeah, this, you, you're just tense. You're nervous, you're excited, you're nervous. Your butterflies are everywhere. And my first scene is to drive a car into shot, suavely get out of the car, swing around the back of the car and spotted Fidelma, the young lady. And I was meant to ask her out on a, on a date because <laughs> she had spotted me in town. The suave doctor. So first thing they said, Mario, just uh, drive the... This is now you're into RTE tech stuff, right? <laughs> Mario, just drive the car into shot, get out. Yeah, hold on, he's there, yeah, shut up. <laughs> yeah, drive the car into shot, Mario. I said, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I, I, I don't drive. Yeah, yeah, that's grand, Mario. Just drive it into shot. Sorry, 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 sorry. I don't drive. Yeah, no, it's grand. It's, it's not a road. It's, it's, it's a sealed off set, Artie. Just drive it into shot. You don't understand. I don't drive a car. Right. So it's a problem. So five minutes later of me throwing a diva fit, right, on my first day, I haven't even spoken a word yet. Val, the transport manager in RTE, is assigned to get into the passenger seat next to me in the car. This is a man in his 50s, grey hair, a bit pissed off, you know what I mean? Like, oh, Jesus. So he gets into the car and I'm there like this. Now, he has to steer the car and his head is down. He has to hide himself. So his head is down between my legs, right? And he's there like this, OK? And I'm there kind of looking like... Right? Fix it so, so, so he's there with his head, his grey head, between my, <laughs> between my crotch, right? right? Now, this, this, is, this, this is, hasn't even started yet, this story. So he's there like this. I drive in. The car, when you see it in the, in the playback, the car sort of jolts, <laughs> stops. <laughs> it's I kind of get out of the car. <laughs> Floppy hair. All right, come around. Right, Fidelma is there. Oh, here he is now. I wonder what he'll say to me. And I'm there. Hi, Fidelma. And uh, la, 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 la. And... Uh, then it would stop or something. And this legendary uh, RT floor manager called Don Irwin would go, yeah, 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 no, we got, we got a board in shot. There was a board in shot there. <laughs> yeah, 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 the board the board did a poo or something on the car. Do it again. So your man, head is in my lap, la, la, crotch. <laughs> out the door. And anyway, I got through that. Yeah, Mario, 
The director says, put a bit of personality into it, will you? <laughs> Wonder. <laughs> now, I think I'm I think I'm Hugh Grant and I'm being told put a bit of personality into it. Imagine being an actor and you're told put a bit of personality into it. What am I no personality? Anyway, I swing around and I'm meant to go. Anyway, hi Fadama. And I put my hands in my kind of crombie. Hi Fadama. And she goes, oh hi. And uh, I go, I noticed you in town earlier on. <laughs> Already sounding a bit pervy. And she goes, yeah, I kind of saw you as well. <laughs> So the crow again. No, that, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the line to invite me out. So then I said, listen, I was wondering, would you like, you know, maybe have a cup of coffee later on in, in town? And she went, I'd love that. OK, bye. Into the car, man between the legs. Boom, <laughs> off I go. Scene over. Well done, Mario. It wasn't great, but anyway, we we'll print it. <laughs> right, so uh, then I'm watching it on TV like this at home. <laughs> like this. Phone starts going. My grandmother. Oh my God, you are wonderful. You are Hugh Grant mixed with Dirk Bogart. <laughs> you are, you're a matinee idol. And I went, thanks, Gamma. Please call her Gamma. <laughs> and I said, then the phone rang. My friends, who had all got together in their house to watch it. Uh, all I could hear is hyenas laughing in the background. <laughs> and I went, what's going on? And they went, <laughs> and I went, what, what? Was I okay? <laughs> no! <laughs> and why? <laughs> the hand! <laughs> And I went, what hand? What are you talking about? Look at it back on the VHS. VHS. The hand! And I went, ah! Played it back on the VHS, and there it is. The hand. And I explained what it is. So I had a kind of a crombie yeah. when I was talking to Fidelma, and I'm kind of looking, I'm looking all smart. But a crombie has a kind of a, I think Tommy would know because he's into men's clothing. Fashion. It's got a, a pocket in it that... A little. It's yeah. got a pocket in it that your hand can come out the other side through okay. the pocket. Because you can put your hand into the pocket, but it actually goes through. It goes through it. Yeah, so all the time I'm talking to her, I'm asking her out, right? And all you can see is this, right? Anyway, just wondering, Em. <laughs> just wondering, Em, do you, fancy go do you fancy going out for a little... Uh, fancy going out for a coffee later? It's the hand of the perv. It's the hand of the biggest perv doctor in the world. <laughs> And of course, RTE just didn't t tell me to reshoot. They just went, it's grand, we're printed. And I'm there like this. At least he's showing a bit of personality. <laughs> More than a bit of personality, Tommy. And all my friends, of course, of course, they, that's the thing they saw. Do you know what? Right, before. So now on, you're going to ask me. So we were going to ask you, why did you move into radio? <laughs> I, I think you know, Tommy. It's because oh, because you actually started the Me Too movement. Sorry, back. I was 21 when I got the part of the doctor, right? And I was in Trinity and I was a student. I was drinking like a fish every night. I was the only student in college who had money. I'd be up to like five o'clock in the morning, right? At parties and things, right? And then they'd go, Mario, do you not know like you're on Glen Row at half six in the morning? You've got an hour and a half to get in there and do your um, scene. <laughs> Driving. Yeah, so, oh. I went in, so I went in once, right, and I was absolutely plastered, right? Now, absolutely plastered, but I managed to cover it up. And I'm the doctor telling <laughs> Dinny and Stephen that they should ease up on the lifestyle a bit. <laughs> right? And I'm completely twisted, right? And I went again, look back on the video a month later, because it came out a month later, and I went, is there any evidence at all that I'm, that I'm wasted? Not a bit. Not a Nothing. Bit. Nothing. No except call from the grandmother, thing. from except, grandma. No, Go except on. one thing. What? I'm at the table, right? I'm at the table and I'm talking away and they go to the wide shot. <coughs> and the wide shot is the table and underneath the table is my leg going like this. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, anyway. <laughs> I think you should ease up on the lifestyle. <laughs> and I went, Jesus, they printed it again. Look at me leg. The doctor is insane. All we need now is the hand as well to come out and go. <laughs> Oh, Glenn God. gargled Row. Oh, man, that's Why, so funny. in God's name, you're going on I tour... I 21! But Gift Grub is going on tour again. Would you just sit down and talk about Glenn Row for yeah. an hour <laughs> every night? I'm trying to promote I'd go the tour. every night if you just sat down and told us stories about oh. Dick and Fidelma and Miley oh, and so Biddy funny. from behind the scenes. Oh, yeah? Amazing! Yeah, you got Amazing match. Maybe I'll add stuff. it to the show, yeah? Do, 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 I know. Do, do, Maybe I'll add it to the show. Oh, God, Mario. And the thing is, as well, like, because it's even funnier now when you look back at it, because I was actually quite pretty. <laughs> You're beautiful. I, I really was, and even prettier than that photograph. And um, when I really came on first, I was like a little gorgeous little doll. <laughs> you really were, yeah. No, but Hugh like Grant kind of quite, the Irish quite Hugh kind Grant. of almost a little feminine, kind of pretty, yeah. I would say. And I was very s small, as in I was only about 11 stone. There he is again. No, that was a little bit later, right? That was halfway through the drinking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mario, listen. 
We could talk all day. <laughs> Tell us the books of tour. We need to just close the door. That's We're the taking them all the time. <laughs> oh, Greg O'Shea really is impressed by this. <laughs> Dude, you wrote up. You did that on the six o'clock. You're going uh, on tour with Gift Grub. You'll have all the usual, I assume, uh, are coming out. Yeah, my alcohol hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My it's, a it's, a it's a new show. Michael it's a new Michael. show, basically. So I'm going to be doing loads of new characters like Tommy Bow and Warren O'Connell. <laughs> Good luck. And, uh, and, but there's going to be loads of new characters. Like at the moment, I'm working at um, a little VT that I'm going to put on the show, which is Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell together. And oh. I'm both of them at the same time. So good. And it'll, be, it'll really look lovely because I see them as a pair now. They are. Yeah, because they're like Ernie and, Ernie and Bert. That's what they, they yeah. go together yeah, now. Yeah, they go together. I want them in every... It's like... But that, whenever they can, they'll always have to be together. And one of them, one of them like, whenever you see them together, Brendan, Brendan is always... His hair is always plastered back and it's coming out in a bit like the bottom. <laughs> And it's kind of very unkempt, and he wears an L hoodie, and he has a pint in front of him, and he's kind of look wrecked. And Colin is this vegan perfection with a green tea in front of him, and these Bert eyelashes, Ernie and Bert from, from, and these gigantic eyelashes, and neither of them can figure out which one of them respects each other more. The <laughs> <laughs> love in. They just like. They, and the, uh, you know, you, just man. the actor loving stuff. I love that. But that <sighs> isn't even going to be live. That's just going to be on BT. So I come up with new characters <sighs> all the time. And um, but, hey, listen, but 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 but, but, but we're, interestingly, we're, there'll be old characters as well. Like, and I mean, I was just talking to Dana outside, and 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 Gordon, your producer, and it was like, um, I don't know if you can print this either, but but we'll try it. But um, it's the thing. Like, Michael Michael Flatley is a massive character of mine. Uh, oh, and like yeah, Michael Flatley, the news. Like the, the news about his aggressive cancer. Yeah. And it really shows you the kind of the world I live in as well, as well as the world he lives in. That like I take the piss out of Michael Flatley all the time. And then something like this happens and you just stops you in your tracks. Mm. And you realize, you know, what a beautiful, colorful bird he is. And, you know, what an amazing man, yeah. really, you know? And yeah, I take the piss out of him. And yeah. But this just brings everything back to True. basics. But you're game for it yeah. as well. And so I would, if anybody, I would wish him all the best. And Absolutely. I hope that he makes an, a full and fantastic recovery. I think we all do. Here, here Fabulous. And it's, and it's lovely there. Gift Grub Live 2023. You are all over the place. Opens in the Royal Theatre Castle Bar on February the 24th. Uh, you're three nights in the Olympia on 13th, 14th, 15th of April. Th uh, four nights in the Cork Opera House. Three are already sold out, I think it is. 8th, yeah. 9th, 10th, 11th of March. And INEC and in Killarney tell on about Paddy's the Day. Yeah. The INEC in Killarney is a good one because it's I, I, it's St Patrick's Day, and it's a two thousand seater in Killarney on 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 a Saturday, and like you know, so that could potentially kick off. Bring the, hands. Bring, bring the hands. Bring the hands. Hand. If people want to get tickets, you honestly think they the can get them. Work? Yes. Yeah, okay. I get love them the on hand. Ticketmaster. Mary <laughs> Rosenstock. What a laugh. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Thank you. To Ireland AM. Now, before we go to fashion, I want to say a huge thank you to viewer Aideen, who just sent me on Instagram a picture. We were just talking about Mary Rosenstock's creepy hand, and Aideen like went this and is found an episode it almost of Glen, of Glen Row. Row. Yes. So I've just sent it to Mario as well. So can we take a picture of what Mario's hand looked like? That oh was his hand. Oh my god! It came through the crumby coat. So he was there, talked doing that whole scene, There's and Fidelma. not the director in RTE said. <laughs> Maybe that looks a bit creepy. Maybe it looks a little bit. Aideen, thank you so much for finding that and sending it into us. That is so brilliant. So quickly, you are fantastic. I've sent it to Mario. He's delighted with life. Now it's time for fashion. Is that a crime against fashion, Lorna Waitman? Uh, we might let that one go. We'll let that kind one of go. Funny. That was the episode that your parents told you you couldn't watch. <laughs> oh, OK, OK, that's it. The Lorna, you are man, here with some great man. fashion this morning. Let's get on to our first slot. Yes, yeah, so we're trying to fill the gap in January, which is always a little bit hard, where you might, you know, we, we've, we're done with last year, we want to move on, but we haven't gotten like access to those trends yet. So what are we going to fill with, especially the weekend I find, you know, you don't want to wear your gym gear, what do you want to put on? So we're keeping it really simple. And one thing I love about the coat knitwear jean combo is that at the moment it's a little bit chilly and our winter is almost Very stretching cold, to like chilly, March, yeah. April. So mm -hmm. this is going to take you right through. But also it's very timeless. And one thing I love about this color combination is that you think blue, pink, um, you know, taupe or, or tan 
colours aren't going to work, but they really, really do. They complement each other really nicely as well. But what I do love about this coat is the little button detail yeah, on it. Yeah, very cute. It's very cute. You've got a lovely collar on it as well. And that jumper is so cosy as well. And these are from House of Logo and they're just about to um, open the store in Nace as well. So if you're nearby there, you can pop mm. in and have a look. But I love a turtleneck jumper as well that comes mm. right up under your chin. Yeah. You're nice and cosy. And with a skinny jean, I, jeans are such a hot topic of conversation because what do you wear? Do you want to go with the mom jeans? Do you want to go with something different for the season? But the skinny jean is never really going to go away. And Thank it's you. so universal with a boot, with a runner. It's not really ever going to fade. Yeah, exactly. And these kind of have a gold look about them as well. This kind of shiny. So what I love about that is that they're not super clean white. So they're not going to show up the dirt as well. And I love that at this time of year because you want to start getting into lighter colors as well. Yeah. And this is kind of a nice way to segue into that. That is lovely. Sarah, nice thank, you yeah, thank you so much. Lovely 60s feel on that It color. does, it's doesn't so it? Nice. And what I like about it, it's kind of got a swing kind of style yeah. to it as well. It's not too structured, which Audrey is lovely. Audrey sort of in charade sort of a thing Very going on. Much yeah. So, so then if you want to kind of move away from the, the knit coat look, but you still want to stay warm, then the cardigan blouse look is where you're going to go. And you'll notice that the tones of these are just getting a little bit lighter. We're moving away from the dark shades. And actually, that kind of vanilla colour is going to be a really big trend for spring, summer. So we're getting ahead of it now. And the contrast of the two fabrics is really nice as well. So if you don't want to do that cotton tea look under right, a cardigan, silk you've got something silky. Satin, exactly. And it's got a nice cowl neck on it so you don't really need to accessorize that much the neckline is actually going to do all the work for you yeah and it has a nice boxy kind of fit to it so if you go with the fitted trouser and something looser over it you'll get a really nice balance of shape which i really like yeah it'd be great tucked into just blue jeans as exactly. well exactly yeah, yeah it's like one of those foundation pieces yeah, yeah, that's yeah, going to yeah. go under everything and you can mix and match which i'm always a big fan of and if you want to move away from denim you want to go towards maybe a chino these are really like a kind of dusky strawberry mm -hmm. Color, which I like. They've got a brushed fabric on them as well, so which, which I quite like, and it tends to kind of not attract any stains and things as well, which I think is a really good fabric mm. quality. And then we've got a runner as well that all you can see here is that you've got a lovely balance of the color, like all of the pinks and the taupes are all picking each other out, which I think is a really practical, comfortable, which is always an important thing, yes. factor when you've got a casual outfit as well. And thanks to the kind of at leisure trend, runners are just such a capsule piece now. You know, they're not just for going She's for a walk in. At the at leisure I know. Thank you, Track Michelle. Suits. At oh, leisure. This is lovely. This nice is coach. very, very chic. Oh. So that kind of, you know, preppy look that we had maybe last spring, summer, we're keeping for this. And I'm obsessed with trench coats. I love them. But the difference with this one is that it's almost got like a quilting effect on the sleeves. Is it so, an actual quilting effect though? Is yes, it padded? It, it is, is padded. padded. And you can actually, what creates the padding actually is more the stitching. So the stitching actually just confines the fabric, which creates oh. that quilting effect okay. which I absolutely love it's also got that lovely brushed fabric feel as well so it isn't like a typical trend That's which I love beautiful. isn't it beautiful and also with the shirt now the shirt is actually quite long so we've tucked it in just to give it a little bit of shape but it's a Oh, it's just kind of, it's almost Ralph Lauren-esque, yeah. which I really love. And this look is from iClothing. But this look but during spring summer. that come in other summer, colours? At the moment, it's just, just this colour. Yeah, and also what I love about this is we're, we're really tapping into trends. And if you looked at the Critics' Choice Awards last night, there was a lot of these kind of like more muted tones. Mm. So it's starting to filter down into the high street, which I really like as well. And a flared trouser this time. But what's really different about these is you'll notice there's a little bit of fading on the knee. Mm -hmm. And what that does, it's almost like the illusion of bringing your eyes in to the narrowest part of your legs, and then it just kicks out oh, again nice. with the, the little boot. Which gotcha. I really like, yeah. And don't be afraid to wear a flare with a boot. I actually think it's it's kind of nice because you get to use your footwear an awful yeah. lot more. You don't just have to go for a stiletto or a sandal. Wear your shoes. And these ones, again, are from eye clothing. And you'll notice such a sensible, good high heel. Yeah. It's nice and block and steady, which is great. Oh, so that's lovely now. Nice it is a lovely yeah. look, isn't Beautiful. it? Yeah, it's very, very timeless so as well. So good. Sarah's back Where's again. That? We're going more casual. More casual. But this is definitely a look for this week because the temperatures oh, yeah. are 
dropping an, an awful this, lot. Yeah. You de this is like almost like a lagging jacket and a coat, which I love. Um, really long, so it keeps your whole entire body nice and cozy. And we've layered up this look a lot. But one of the really good things about this jacket is it's quite hard to find a puffer jacket that has a hood on it, yeah. and it's quite long. So you will have all, everything you need for the elements this week. Is there it. zips on that at the back as well that you can open them up? There's but actually there's buttons. buttons at the side. Yeah, and do you know what they're really handy? Um, really, really handy for is when you're in the car and you're yeah, getting you in, you can just open exactly them up, yeah. you can open them well, up just, just a little bit more. You need to, if you've got a white exactly, through, you need to open and you need to power through the rain yeah. and the snow. Then that's definitely the way Duff. to go. And I've layered it with a jumper that's actually more like a tunic style. So I do love something that comes right down over my mm. hips and bum to keep me nice and cozy. And it's layered with really nice kind of PVC um, a vinyl look. Uh, leggings and they're actually lovely and kind of fleecy on the inside. Okay. So they're nice and cozy. These again are something that you can wear with absolutely everything. You could even take the blouse from the previous look, style them with these, make it look really chic. Yeah. And then back to the trainer. They're not going anywhere for this season. So it's definitely a great time to get yourself prepared. Puffa, you know, you know what, cozy, you know what yeah. weather's coming this week. Fair play to you. Oh yes. <laughs> get it out, get it done. Thank you so much for that. Pleasure. Some lovely looks this morning. Thank you, Lorna. Now, Cheers. coming up uh, next, myself and Tommy are delving into the world of laughter yoga. Wish us luck. We'll see you in a few minutes. You're going to be okay. Thanks for staying with us. Now, we did mention today that it is Blue Monday, so we think it's time to inject some happiness into your day for oh. everyone that's watching around the country. <laughs> what better way to do it than some laughter yoga? We're looking forward to this. Instructor Marie Angeline Lasco joins us. Good morning to you, Marie. Good um, morning. Tell us, laughter yoga, yoga we're seeing huge, so popular all over the country, but mm -hmm. laughter yoga, what's different about that? Laughter yoga really is laughing. Um, it, it originated in India with Dr. Kataria, Right. who was a medical doctor, and he realised that his patients were getting better quicker when they laughed. So he started a little laughter yoga club on a beach uh, or a park, uh, and uh, basically they were just laughing, the beginning telling jokes, etc. Then they started to laugh for no reason, and they realised you can just do that, laugh for no reason. So that's how it started. Now there's thousands of people laughter yoga club and all that all over the world it's it's in each country it's in each most company now will have laughter yoga for the in-house training or wellness day um hand parties birthday parties hen, i've heard it actually at hand parties yes and so do you do, do you teach just ordinary yoga as well or is it just the laughter yoga yes so i started teaching the ordinary yoga many years ago yeah. and when i first heard about laughter yoga, i said ah it's one of those gimmick i yeah, didn't take it seriously type thing, but, yeah. And then um, I'm also working in healing. So I, I had a lot of clients going through very serious stuff. And I said, gosh, I need to do something to balance it out so uh -huh. I can still be there for them. And so I decided I'll try it out. So I went to a laughter yoga class and I couldn't believe how instantly my mood changed, you know, because it brings down your cortisol right. and up your serotonin. So it just- So produces... you're releasing your serotonin as you're laughing. Yeah. So it produced just that, that wellness feeling without having to go for a drink or whatever it is that people do to be happy. And also, say, for example, you talk about hand parties. Usually everybody knows the bride, but they don't know each other. Right. When they laugh together, you feel this sense of connection. OK. And then so, you know, it's great icebreakers, you know. Uh, in terms of benefits, so you're mm -hmm. like people, it's January, it's a pretty miserable weather outside. If people are a bit sceptical about this, like, can anybody do it? Do you have to turn up in the right frame of mind? Oh, absolutely not. That's the beauty about laughter yoga. You can fake it until it becomes real because your brain doesn't know the difference if you're actually really laughing or faking it. So say, for example, um, some of you at home may feel, well, I really don't feel like laughing today. Today, yeah. And I would encourage you uh, to actually go through the motions and believe you me, I think when the three of us start laughing, everybody will laugh because <laughs> laughter is contagious. Yeah. And I, I have actually seen clips of you laughing your head off. Well, we, in, Most fairness, morning. in fairness, <laughs> the three of us do have a laugh here every day. Yeah. And I think that, that comes across as well. We do have fun on the show, so we do laugh. But I think it is important, and I sort of always say to somebody, if you make somebody laugh or smile every day, you're doing some good. 
It is like a medicine that's accessible to all of us. It doesn't cost anything. You can do it on your own. Of course, it's much more fun to do it as a group, but you can actually do it on your own. Um, is it not a bit odd doing it on your own? <laughs> what do you do, look in the mirror or something? <laughs> well, no, I suppose um, you could just laugh on your own. So, for example, the guy who taught me came from Fintone. Funny name, actually. His name was Michael Stretch. But anyway, he was telling us that every morning his routine was in the shower, he would use what we call the laughter soap, so pretend to wash yourself <laughs> with a laughter, and he would laugh on his own in the shower. Come on, let's, <laughs> let's, uh, okay. let's have a let's look at do, it. Let's do it, we're going to stand up. So, this, so if, you were, if we were in a class with you, this is what we'd be doing? Yes, absolutely. Okay. I usually start with a warm-up exercise, like introducing the three basic laughter. Okay, okay. So there's a laughter for the face, a laughter for the heart, and a laughter for the belly. Okay. So remember, listeners and viewers, um, that you can fake it till you make it. So for the laughter for the face, you make a big smile, yeah. and the sound is hee hee hee. So the call of three, we'll all do hee hee together. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, that's a very loud hee hee. <laughs> Does it have to be that loud? That's very forceful. Okay, that's oh. rude. Okay, that's rude. I won't do it. What's, what's next? Ho, ho, okay. ho. So, yeah. No, but for your heart. Is it your heart that's next? Yeah, we'll go to the ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're going yeah. to ho, We'll go ho, to ho. heart in a minute. So, just rubbing your belly. Pretend you've had a nice dinner. It's Christmas. Santa's laughter. Okay. So, make a circle with your lips and the sound is ho, ho, ho. And it will be loud again. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let next one. Next one. And okay. then For the heart. heart. Yes, it's the ha ha ha. So ha, just ha, open ha. the mouth by. Okay. Ha ha ha. <laughs> you have some laughs. You really do have some laughs. I do. Ah. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> I hope you're laughing at home. I hope that made you smile this morning. Thank you so much. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, info at springintolife.ie. Springintolife.ie. Spring We're in. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. I was watching the two of you go, what's going on? Thank you, thank you. Oh, lads. We do have great fun here. That's all from us today. Uh, coming up tomorrow, Beauty Business Powerhouse Suzanne Jackson will be joining us uh, on the show. OK, calm down. Uh, plus, we're all going to be hearing about a serial fraudster. He has been targeting vulnerable families around the country. We'll have our usual news. Sports and weather as well. See, See you tomorrow. tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs>